Hi there, I'm Roger Watts from the Clay Cellar. I've been, I've been fixing kilns now for 30 years. Now I might look a bit of a mess because I've just got back from Yalding where one of my customers has had his Cromarty top loading oval kiln under six foot of water. You've probably all heard in the news that Yalding was badly affected and this poor guy, his, his whole business depends on his kiln and it's been quite an interesting project drying it out. Anyway, I'm here now to tell you about Ben, uh, Bentrup TC44 controller, which is the latest series that's taken over from the TC40. Um, it's a single program controller and it has a one, two ramps. The first ramp you can um, change according to a, a set menu um, and then you can bring up your top temperature which is in increments of five degrees and then it has a, a, a dweller or soak at the top for uh, a variety of times. Now if you fit a new controller to an old kiln always be aware of the problem of a mismatch between the thermocouple that is in the kiln and what the controller is already set up for. So there are three common types of thermocouple you'll come across, R-type, S-type and K. R is the old British uh, standard which is used by the majority of English kiln manufacturers. S-type is used exclusively by the, uh, the German and continental kiln manufacturers Unfortunately, Cromati used S-type for a number of years in their kilns, so th they do come up there. And K-type often are in American kilns. They all will give different values of temperature. And if you want, to, if you want an accurate readout, it's essential that the controller and the thermocouple are matched. The controllers that we sell all come with three metres of cable and I think that's important to have the kiln as far away from the controller as reasonable so that the controller is not affected by the heat of the kiln. It's not in an awkward place because the control cable is so short. With three metres of cable you've probably got a nice choice of where to put it in your studio. Convenient height for you to operate and to see, and if you can have a controller that is mounted um, facing the door so that when you want to have a look quick to see what the kiln's up to, you don't even have to come into the room but can look at it from the door, it's a great help. Um, so we'll plug it into the simulator. The controller switches on in a little rocker switch underneath turn it on and now it checks itself out and gives its little reference number of the chip that's inside it. Then after a few moments it'll register temperature. You can operate this controller with the central array of switches. At 9 o'clock you can move the program to the left. At 3 o'clock you can move the program to the right. The button at the top with the plus will change the parameter upwards and the minus at six o'clock will bring the parameter downwards. So the simplest thing is to go to move the controller along to the beginning of the firing process. Now the light is flashing on the graph and therefore it's asking you what parameter do you want at this section which is the first ramp and at the moment it's showing 120 which is 120 degrees per hour. If you want it slower, you can press the minus, 60, 30. So now it'll go up at 30 degrees an hour. Up to its maximum of skip. So if you're doing a biscuit firing, you'll probably want, if it's a big chunky item, to go up very slowly at 30, but more likely to go up at 60. 60 is convenient because it's simple to remember, goes up one degree per minute and the intermediate temperature is fixed in the controller at 600. 
So if you're going up at 60 degrees an hour, it'll get to the halfway mark, 600, in 10 hours. But if you're going to go slower, it'll now take 20 hours. And if you're going up at 120, it'll now take 5 hours. Um, if you're doing a glaze firing, you'll probably go up at 120 degrees an hour or at 240. So there's probably four speeds to remember. 30, 60, those two for biscuit firing, 120 or 240 for glaze firing. Now, don't forget the intermediate temperature, the halfway temperature, 600, is already fixed in it. From then on, the controller will go at full power to your top temperature. So you don't have any option, it's at full power, the second ramp. The top temperature, though, can be changed in five degree increments. And so just keep your finger on the button and it will whiz up to whatever you want. So you choose your biscuit temperature and always remember that you want to think of what you're going to do next when you're choosing your biscuit temperature. So if you're going to dip, you'll need a porous pot and around about a thousand will be the right temperature to go to. If you're going to brush on the glaze, then 1100 will give you the ideal hard surface where the brush will glide over the surface nice and easily, depositing the glaze without lines and without a sort of a sticky effect. If, however, you're only going to do a single firing, then if it's porcelain, you'll need to biscuit fire, because it's only once, probably up to about 1200, maybe a bit more, 1230. Remember, the higher you go, the more strain you put on the elements of your kiln, and certainly the greater electricity you'll use. So if you want to be economic, always try to find the optimum temperature, but the lowest temperature that gives you the results that are satisfactory to you. So let's do a biscuit firing at 1100 because you're going to then subsequently brush on a glaze. 1100 is showing, then move on to select the dwell or the soak. So this will allow the whole kiln during this soak period to reach the temperature that you've asked it to. And the normal one to go for would be 30 minutes. But if you're wanting to, you can go to 20, 0, 10, 20, or a full hour. But 30 is the standard. That will allow the whole kiln to reach temperature. When you're doing a glaze firing, it will allow the glaze that is now molten to flow and bubbles to come out and a nice gloss to develop. So 30 is you can probably leave in there. So if we go backwards now just to check out what we've done, it's going to dwell it for 30 minutes at 1100. Don't forget the second ramp was full power and then the first ramp is we're going to change that because it's a biscuit firing down to 60. So there we are. This is our simple program. 60 degrees an hour up to 1100. 30 minute dwell and then it switches off. So this controller now will remember the setting that you've put in there even when you switch it off. So the next time you switch it on it'll be on this particular biscuit firing. But it will be very simple. Next time you switch it on it checks itself out. And now let's say you're going to do a glaze firing. So go back to the beginning. Go up now, probably at 120 degrees an hour, to a top temperature of whatever the glaze manufacturer recommends. And if you're using, a, say, a, um, a BOTS brush on earthenware glaze, that'll be around about 1050. And once again, the 30 minute soak is be perfectly adequate. So check that again back to the beginning because it's logical, 120 degrees an hour, up to 600, don't forget at 600 it automatically goes on to full power, so you don't have any option on the second ramp, 1050 is your top temperature and 30 minutes is your dwell time. So you can check this however many times you like, but at some stage you think that's enough 
and switch on. Switch on by pressing the red button. That changes to green and now the controller is underway. The graph light is lit and you've got a display of the temperature in the kiln and a little red light is flashing to show that the controller is now in charge of the kiln. If you just want to review your program because you've forgotten what you've put in, you don't have to stop it and start again. Just go through the program. It's going up at 120 to 1050 and it's dwelling for 30. But if you wanted to change anything, the panel is now locked and you can't change it because it's now firing. But if it was important that you change, say, the top temperature because you just thought, I think I'll economise a little bit and drop down to 1040, just switch it off, pop back to that temperature, bring it down, 1040, and switch it on again. And the controller will be quite happy to accept a new top temperature or a new speed. It won't get into a tangle. It will happily go on in the new program that you've just put in. And uh, there will be no upset with the controller. It's op this controller is operating two contacts, as you, as you can see. There's the green light, which represents the safety contactor, and the red light represents the working contactor or the primary contactor. The green one comes on at the beginning of the firing. You'll hear the contactor clicking on. The red one is controlling the, the power to the elements and clicks on and off and on and off throughout the firing. The green one is there as a safety feature. It's there in case the working contactor, the primary contactor, gets stuck. Worst of all, it gets stuck in the on position. If that happens, the temperature in the kiln will rise uncontrollably and may well easily exceed the temperature that you've put in. However, on this controller, if the temperature rises beyond 20 degrees above whatever temperature that you've set in as your top temperature, the safety contactor will come out, will switch the kiln off. And therefore, with this con controller, you can, once you've switched it on, you've possibly just gone through the setting, you've made sure that there's no flammable materials on top of the kiln, you haven't left your notebook on the top of the kiln, nothing's going to fall onto it. It will then happily do the entire firing without any attention from you. You can go away on your holidays knowing that if anything went wrong, it'll shut down and it'll give you an error signal for the problem that you've got.